On an analog mixer, everything is pretty straightforward. Mic input one always goes on to fader number one, and your master mix always comes out of the bit that says master. But with digital mixers, things get a little bit more ambiguous. Any input can go to any channel, and any channel can go to any output. What does output one even mean anymore? Even worse is that every digital mixer seems to have a different routing screen, so it can feel like you're starting from scratch every time you look at a new mixer. But have you heard the good news? By the end of this video, you'll have a strategy for tackling the routing screen on any mixer. You'll be comfortable connecting up stage boxes, using Dante, and sending auxiliary mixes and matrices wherever your heart desires. If we've not met yet, I'm Andrew, and I spend all my time mixing live shows. Since we're talking about Dante in this video, you should check out my Dante setup guide. I'll leave a link in the description down below. It's totally free. Let's dive in. Part one is getting some ideas, some concepts clear in our head, right? Because when we think about the analog mixer concept, right? Analog's easy because it is a straight pathway, right? It's, it's literally bits of wire conducting electrical signals from point to point, right? When you plug that microphone into the back of your mixer, there is a piece of metal which connects that microphone cable all the way down to the fader and then to the master bus, right? With some slight caveats. So your microphone goes into the input, it goes to the fader, you turn the fader up, it goes to the master, and then you turn the master up and it comes out of the master output. As long as you know how to turn the gain up and unmute the channel, you can get sound out of the master. Even more advanced routing with like matrices and buses, there are literally buttons on every single fader that tell you, send it to the master. It's pretty straightforward. Digital doesn't have the same kind of pathways, right? You plug your microphone into an input, right? And it is immediately gained up, that's where the preamp is, and then is converted into a digital signal. It's just kind of floating about there for you to do whatever you want with it, for you to assign it to whatever channel you want and manipulate it in whatever way you want. When I look to think about things in the digital mixer as the sort of virtual realm and the physical realm, right? It is a physical place in the room that you can take a microphone cable, right? And you can connect that microphone cable up to a socket, right? You make a physical connection. That might be a stage box sitting on the stage, or you might be plugging that microphone cable into the back of the mixer directly. It could even be a jack cable going into the back of the mixer, but whatever it is, it is a physical connection. You can take the cable and plug it into something. Then you have virtual locations, right? Because once it's inside the mixer, the signal can be a whole bunch of places. So it could be an input channel, right? That is where we process the audio. The input channel is a virtual place inside the mixer where we manipulate the audio that we connected to the mixer. We turn the volume up and down. We apply EQ, we apply compression. It could also be an output bus, right? It could be a matrix, it could be an auxiliary bus, it could be a group. That's somewhere where we collect all of the input channels and recombine them to send them somewhere else. Getting your head around routing on a digital mixer is all about understanding how we link the physical realm to that digital realm. How we get this signal in this microphone cable onto an input channel inside the mixer. We also need to understand how to link something in the virtual realm to something else in the virtual realm. So an input channel to an output bus, like a master bus or a monitor bus. And we also need to understand how to link it up in the opposite direction. So an output bus to a physical output in the real world, which we then connect to speakers. Big difference between digital and analog is that we are in charge of how these connections are made, right? In analog, it is already set by the manufacturer. In digital, we have control over that. That kind of flexibility is amazing, but it can be confusing. Some mixers do start with sort of basics set up and you can just sort of plug and play to an extent, but that's not what we're interested in, right? We want to be better. We want to understand the equipment that we use. Everything inside the mixer and outside of the mixer is just a series of inputs and outputs. What goes in must come out. We plug our microphone into a physical input and then we must connect the output of that physical input into the input of a channel. Similarly, it goes into the input channel and it comes out of the input channel into a bus and it goes out of the bus and out of an output. So when you connect an input up and you push a fader up and you expect sound to be at that fader, you need to ask yourself, why? Why should there be sound at that fader? What decision have I made to get it there? Similarly, when you push all the faders up and you push your master up and you're expecting sound to come out of the speakers, ask yourself, why? Why would the sound be coming out of that specific place where I've connected my speakers? So digital mixers challenge you to really understand signal flow and be able to differentiate it. You need to understand that a physical input is different from a channel on the mixer. So now that we've got this kind of broad overarching theme of physical and virtual places and our responsibility is to connect them, 
we need to move on to part two, which is getting sound into the mixer. Just a quick announcement, I want to help you build your career in live sound. So I'm going to be shortly launching the Live Sound Career Accelerator. It's going to be a 12 week program where 10 people get to work closely with me and we're going to work on getting your skills, your confidence and your connections built up to let you build the career that you want in live sound. If you're interested and you want to join the waitlist, you can fill out the form in the description below this video. I'll see you there. So we've got our microphone and we plug it into our mixer, right? Into the back of the mixer. We've made a physical connection. Our microphone is now connected to the mixer. Now on an analog mixer, as I just said before, what would happen is that goes into the preamp, we turn the gain up, and then it goes into the EQ, and then it goes through the bus section to the fader, and eventually to the master, right? On the digital mixer, what happens is that does still go directly to the preamp, that's the first thing that happens. And then after the preamp, it goes straight into a converter, where it's converted to digital, and then this is where the crazy stuff happens. After it has been converted to digital, it's now our responsibility, right? We are the parent. We are responsible for getting our child, the audio signal, to their final destination, which is, you know, probably a channel fader. We want it to go to a channel fader, to an input channel on this mixer, so that we can do EQ, compression, level adjustments, recombine it, and send it out the master later. Since the XLR is in the physical realm and the input channel is in the virtual realm, it's inside our mixer, we need to marry the two of these guys up because we cannot take it for granted. And we do that by heading to the routing screen. We need to collect our newly digitized input from its physical location and we need to tell it where to go in our virtual mixer, right? We need to guide it to the input channel. And actually the process, although slightly different from mixer to mixer, is broadly the same concept across all digital mixers. So let's say that we plugged it into an XLR point on the back of our mixer, right? This is often called local input, surface input, mixer input, that's something like that. We need to go to the routing screen and we need to find where our local or surface inputs are. The routing screen will usually be called routing, it might be called patching, it might be called IO. This is different from mixer to mixer, but you really need to read the manual to find this kind of stuff out. Or, you know, use a bit of detective work, a bit of common sense, right? You can find it. Look for routing, patching, IO. And this screen can look different depending on what mixer you're on. A really common way to see it is this sort of grid, right? Where you've got input channel at the top and you've got physical input on the left, right? And then you just find the point where the two cross over. If you connect it to input one on your physical input and you want it to go to channel input one in your virtual input, you put a cross at the intersection of physical input one and channel input one, right? If you'd connected to physical input three, but you still wanted it to come into channel one on your digital mixer, you would find the cross section of channel three on the physical input and then channel one on the virtual input. Where do they cross? That's where you press the button and it makes the connection. It might not look exactly like that. You might end up with a sort of menu where it says like at the top, you select the input channel that you want on the mixer. So it's mixer input one. This is your virtual input, right? And then underneath mixer input one, there's a bunch of boxes and you can pick the physical input that you want to assign to mixer input one, okay? So mixer input one, you want it to come from XLR point three on the back of your mixer. You would just make sure it says mixer input one at the top and then you would click XLR point three. And you can usually step through these inputs and assign different physical inputs to the virtual inputs on your console. You might also get a kind of left and right view, like Midas mixers are quite comfortable with this, where you have to find your device, your surface, your local inputs on the left, and then you have to find your input channels, your virtual inputs on the right, and then you have to click on the left. So you click on your physical input and you assign it to your virtual input channel, right? Point is, you need to learn on your specific mixer that you're using where to find your physical inputs and how to assign them to your virtual input channels. If you're connected to the back of your mixer, you really need to look for a part that says inputs on the, one of these screens and it needs to say local, surface, mixer, something like that. Right, because if you just go in and click the first input you see, you might be routing a Dante input, you might be routing a stage box input. This is the time where we need to be an adult about the equipment that we're using. Download the manual, read the manual, do control F in the manual and search for surface inputs, local inputs, mixer inputs, routing, patching, IO, and find the part of the manual that tells you what screen, what button to press and how that's located, right? I talked a little bit about stage boxes there, right? How is this different if we want to assign a stage box to an input channel? 
Usually on these mixers, stage boxes are identified by the protocol that you use to send audio back and forth, right? Because it's digital audio, it has a protocol. I won't get into it too much just now, right? But it's going to say something like AES50, if it's a Midas or a Behringer disc. It's going to say DX maybe, if it's um, an Allen Heath disc. It might say Dante, if it's a Yamaha disc. It might say Maddie if it's a digital disc, and maybe there's other protocols as well, right? Back to manual time, you need to know what protocol your desk is using, what protocol your stage box is using so that you can find that in your routing screen. And then the process is exactly the same, right? You open up your routing screen and you make sure that you find the inputs, right? Because the other thing you don't want to do is be routing stuff to the outputs and thinking it's going to the inputs. Once you find your input screen, you need to find the protocol that you're using. So if it says on the left, AES50, that's Midas's protocol. You click that open and then you will see the inputs on your stage box because your stage box is connected to the AES input on your mixer. Same thing for Allen and Heath, right? If you're connected using a DX stage box, you would open the bit that says DX. You make sure you're on inputs and then you find the section that says DX. And there's a third wild card here, right? Because there's things like Dante. And Dante doesn't work in the same way as this, right? Because Dante has an extra step in between. Quite often, the way Dante interacts with a mixer, small exception for Yamaha mixers, but the workflow is the same, is that there is a Dante card installed in the mixer. And then you'll need to use Dante controller, right? And it's just an extra step, but the same thought pattern, right? You need to ask yourself, right? I'm plugging into this physical input, right? What happens now? The physical input goes to a Dante input first, okay? So you need to use Dante controller, and you need to marry up your physical input to a Dante input, which is a virtual input, right? So using Dante controller, you would say, okay, I want channel one of my Dante stage box to go to channel one of my Dante card, which is in your mixer, right? This is confusing. I will link a whole other video to Dante as well, which goes more in detail in this. Now that you've done that, right, you might think that's me. I've now routed the stage box or the wireless microphones to my mixer. Job's a good one, right? But you're still, you're halfway there because you still need to go to the mixer now. And so on your IO screen, on your patching screen, you will find Dante card in there somewhere in the inputs section. And now you need to complete that, right? You need to pick that signal up where you left it off in a virtual holding place, right? Which was the Dante card. You left it on Dante card one. So now you need to patch Dante card one to mixer input one and now you've finished the chain. Once sound gets into your input channels, you still need to get it out of the mixer again, right? So we come on to part three, which is how to route outputs on a digital mixer. And remember, you can pick up that free Dante guide in the description down below if Dante is confusing the heck out of you. So outputs, I made a video about matrix outputs, right? And someone left a comment, but how do these matrices get out of the board? So I'm gonna address that now, right? You decide how mixes, matrices, buses, whatever you wanna call them, you decide how they leave the mixer. Because remember, we're a parent, the audio signal is a child. And whether you are ready to be a parent or not, it's time for you to get that audio signal where it needs to go. Remember, the input channels allow us to process, EQ, compression, levels. And then the idea is that we recombine all those input channels in a bus and send it out to some speakers, right? The main idea usually is to get it out of the master output into our main PA speakers. Alternatively, we could be sending it out of an auxiliary output to monitor speakers. Now, every input fader has to be sent to a destination, right? We decide where that input fader goes. So we are entirely in the virtual realm here, right? Some mixers default by sending every input channel to the master bus, right? And you don't choose that. Some mixers, looking at you, Midas, don't start that way. And you have to choose to send every single input to the master bus, if that's what you want to do with them. So before you assign a channel to the master bus, to your stereo left, right fader, there is a broken connection here, right? It's all going into the mixer, into the input channel, you've routed everything correctly, but then it just ends. You push that fader up, but nothing happens. It doesn't go anywhere. So when you select your input channel, you'll find a button on the mixer surface that says me, left, right, something like that, master. You press that button, and now you're sending that 
to the master fader. So now you can solo your master fader and when you turn up your faders on the main mix, you'll see signal going in there. But maybe you still don't have sound coming out of your speakers and you wonder why that is. That's because we have a virtual output, right? We have a virtual channel, this master bus, and we need to connect that to a physical output, right? We need to connect it to a physical XLR point somewhere in the room, which then goes further to amplifiers and speakers. Now remember, we're in charge, so we need to head back to the routing screen. And we just do the same thing that we did before, but we make sure that we are in the output section, right? And we're gonna see the same kind of situation, right? It's either gonna be a grid, or it's gonna be a menu, or it's gonna be a left-right setup. And we need to find the virtual holding place where our mix is, right? So that could be our master fader, our main mix, left, right, whatever it's called on that mixer. And then we need to identify the physical place where we want that to come out. So we need to say, okay, I want it to come out of channel 15 and 16 on my stage box. Remember the stage box is usually governed by a protocol. So maybe that's AES 50 you need to look for on one side of your patching screen. And you need to make sure that the master is coming out of 15 and 16 on AES 50 or DX, or Dante, or whatever it is. Alternatively, maybe you want it to come out of the local outputs on the back of your mixer. Same thing, you're looking for local, surface, whatever it was called in the input section, exact same thing, except now you want to be routing the master mix to that output. Presumably we want to send a monitor mix out as well, right? It's the exact same process. It begins at the input channel. You can select your input channel and you can decide to send it to whatever auxiliary bus or mix that you have available on your mixer. We are in charge of where it goes. It's not going to automatically come up there. So we need to make sure that we are sending the audio to our auxiliary bus, and then we're also responsible for where that auxiliary bus goes, right? Just because we send it to that bus doesn't mean that it's suddenly going to come out of output one on the stage box on the stage. We need to go to our routing screen, find the bus that we just picked, bus one, bus two, whatever it was. And we need to make sure that it is then assigned the virtual holding place, the bus is assigned to a physical output in the room on a stage box. And we need to remember to turn it up as well because it's just another master fader. And if you are sending to the bus, but you've rooted the output of the bus, but you haven't turned the master fader up on the bus or unmuted it, it's the same as mixing with the mute button on. So say you've done all that and you still don't have sound in your monitor wedges, your monitor speakers on stage. Then you start to ask the question, okay, where was I taking that signal from on my input channel, right? Because remember, you're responsible for collecting the signal, moving it off to the bus, and then assigning that bus to a physical output in the real world. And in your virtual world, right, you still need to pick somewhere on the signal chain, right? Once it comes in, it's digitized, it still goes through the EQ, the compression, the fader before it's moved on to its bus, right? And if you have selected post fader, for your monitor send, for your auxiliary send or whatever, then you need to make sure that your master fader for that mix is up. It's a whole other thing. If you don't get this, I'll leave a video in the description or up here or whatever, which explains pre-fader and post-fader. But again, you're responsible for dictating where you collect that signal and making sure that it gets to the output. But it gets even more complicated, right? Because these masters and auxiliary buses don't actually need to leave the mixer, right? This is why they're often not assigned to an output automatically at the start. We might be using auxiliary buses as groups and then the destination for everything changes, doesn't it? Suddenly our input channels are no longer rooted to our master output because they're going straight to an auxiliary group, right? That means that our auxiliaries are no longer rooted to a physical output in the actual room because we want to reroute them in the virtual realm further onto the master fader. So now there's a whole other stage in between. So digital mixers really put you through your paces when it comes to understanding routing. Similarly, that master fader, although you think at first, yeah, I want that to go to my main speakers, a lot of the time that gets more complicated and you don't want the master fader to go directly to an output on your stage box or on your mixer. You want it to go further to matrix output. So after you've routed your master fader to matrix outputs, you might have four different matrix outputs. You might have three separate matrices going to different outputs, right? You've got your main left, right? You've got your front fills and you've got your sub. You might have a recording feed. You might want the recording feed to come out locally on the mixer and go into a little zoom recorder while you route the rest of the matrices out of your stage box. So to answer the question of how, where do these matrices come out of the mixer? The answer is you decide, you're in charge. You need to know how to use the routing screen to navigate those matrices, right? You need to decide where your master feeder is going, whether that's to a physical output or to another virtual input, a bus within your mixer, a matrix. And then once it gets to that matrix, you need to decide where that matrix is going. Is it going out of another physical output into a speaker 
Or if it's a recording feed, it might be just staying in the virtual realm, right, and going via Dante to a computer recording it. That's a lot to take in, so leave me a comment down below and let me know if you followed along or if you have any other specific questions about routing, and I'll try and make a video and address them. I'll leave a video up here to routing on M32 because that's just awful, and I'll leave a video up here about the pre and post fader as well. Until next time, goodbye.